There's been a lot of chatter this week about Airtable's latest AI feature, the ability to take documents, upload them to Airtable, and then run some summarization on the document itself. And this is pretty cool. We've heard of lots of great examples so far. People who are doing things like resume screens, they're uploading resumes, they're trying to say who are the best candidates and identify certain properties of those candidates. But at the same time, I really haven't heard anybody talking about the deeper architectural things that we can do with this when we combine it with Airtable's existing automations. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why I'm so excited about this feature, because we're going to take an invoice that we get and we're going to upload it. And then we're not only going to summarize that information, but we're actually going to generate line items. We're going to generate the entire invoice and we're going to do this in a really accurate way that we can, pulling from Airtable's AI and then using structured data around it. And hopefully this will give you lots of ideas on how you might use this in your own workflow. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, before we get into the how this works, we're gonna just start with an example. So I built an interface here and in the interface, let's say we have different expenses, different invoices for our company. And we wanna just be able to upload this because we're getting it from a variety of different vendors. They all have different formats. We're not generating the invoices. Instead, we're getting invoice and this is really an accounts payable kind of process. So let's start and say I'm an employee and I want to upload an invoice. So I've got a really simple form here. I'm just gonna go ahead and go on my computer and browse for this invoice I downloaded from a vendor. And then once the file is uploaded, I'm gonna click on this button to upload the invoice. Now here we'll go into our submit invoice step and you can see this says processing upload. So there's a document created, a record for us, but we don't have all the data that we need yet. So in the background, this is where the AI is actually processing this. Now you can see this change from processing to the actual title. And that's because we have a formula that helped us with that. So from here, this now populated the vendor name, the invoice, the subtotal, tax, the total amount, all of this information is coming from the invoice. And the part that I think is really the coolest is that this is all top level information. This is what I've seen other consultants talk about and, and be able to extract information, put it into different fields. But we want to also take that information and create those line items. So what this means is if we actually open up our document, we can see that we had three different kinds of widgets. We had red widgets, blue and gold, different quantities, different rates, different amounts. And as we know, inside of Airtable, we'd need junction tables or we need line items to be able to support that actual data. It's not all something that lives on the actual invoice object itself. So back here, we're able to see that we actually generate new records, new invoice lines, each with their own item, their own quantities, rates, and amounts. All of this gets subtotaled up, adds the tax, and we get to the total 8,653.75. And we can check, open this up, does it match? It does. So I found that the accuracy of this is really great. Now, at this point, process wise, our employee would be able to submit this for approval and we go through a whole approval queue. But really, the magic here lies in what we're able to do with AI and then how we're able to get that structured data. So now if we take a look at our data, we're able to see what's happening behind the scenes. So we've got this invoice summary field that I created. It's a long text field and you can see this little icon which denotes that it's using Airtable's AI. If you haven't used Airtable AI before, we have a video on getting started with that. So we'll link to that in the description as well. And then from here, I'm just gonna edit my field. And you can see the first part that we do is that we say, you know, this is an invoice and we can use our little blue button over here to pick the fields. And what's supported now, which wasn't before, is the ability to choose our actual attachments field. So in this case, we have a dedicated upload spot for that invoice. And then here's where it gets really interesting because most use cases that I've seen people do are all including text. It's giving a summary. It's saying, hey, I want you to pull this information and here's how I want you to talk about this or I want you to return a certain option. But oftentimes I think people forget that we can also use LLMs to be able to create structured data. And the structured data that we're using in this case is JSON. Now I'm not gonna pretend that everybody watching this instantly knows what JSON is and how we configure it and how we can set it up. I will say if you are a DIY kind of person, there's a lot you can do using ChatGPT to be able to generate some of this yourself. But for the purposes of this video, just think of this as a structured data format that we can use to always point to data the same way. So what's important here is that I have different properties like the vendor and the invoice state and our payment terms, and all that information is living at that top invoice level. But I also have an array or a list of items, and these are going to be those line items that we talked about. So in here, I've got line items, 
And I'm showing that it has the ability to collect multiple of these line items, each with their own item, quantity, and rate. And then if you have any kind of confusing or tricky information, I find it helpful to give some additional instructions. So here I'm providing an instruction that the vendor is not the bill to, it's the company who sent the invoice. Because as you can imagine, you have a bill to, but you also have the company who sent the invoice. So we just want to help disambiguate that a little bit. Now, because I wanted to have this automatically generated on the upload, I went into the settings here and I said, generate this automatically. So normally there's a little button that you can press to generate, but I just wanted this to be attached to when we uploaded that document itself to automatically run. So I turned that on. And then I also set this to GPT-40 mini because this is going to be less operational cost if you're using Airtable AI. And this worked just as accurately for me. So from here, we might want to take a look at the data itself just so you can see what that JSON looks like. And so here's one that was actually generated that we created just a moment ago. And this is what it was able to extract from the document, all of that data itself being correct. But now we need to take the data that we have in this JSON and we need to tell the system to do something with that. So to do this, I created a new automation. To trigger this, I'm using when a record matches conditions. And I'm saying on that invoice, when the invoice summary, that's our AI field, when that is not empty, now we want to be able to trigger this. So when the record is initially created, this isn't triggered. But once the AI processes and now it puts that JSON in the field, now it knows to kick off this automation. And that's how we double check to make sure that we're not actually triggering our automation before the AI has done its job. Now I've seen some people suggest, hey, if you have some structured data, why don't you go ahead and use the generate with AI step to be able to extract data from certain lines that you have if you're not using a structured data format like JSON. But if you're using a generate with AI step, that's going to now cost you additional credits and it's not going to be quite as accurate. So I would suggest if you can put it into a structured data format, then we have some other options at our disposal. So in this case, what I was able to do is use Airtable scripting to run a script. And if I go and edit my code, just to show you at a high level here, what I'm essentially doing is passing in the invoice summary, that JSON data, and then I'm also passing the Airtable record ID of my invoice ID, the actual record that this was triggered from. Now I'm not gonna spend too much time in this video digging into the code because there's really lots of different use cases you can do with this. But basically when I'm pulling in those fields from my input config, then what I'm doing is I'm using json.parse to take that JSON that I have from that field and that's where I can access then all of my different properties, my vendor, my invoice date, my payment terms, my tax. And this is now how we get that structured data to be able to use it to generate and create, as you can see, create all of those individual line items and be able to update the record itself. So if you find yourself in a situation where you wanna really take that structured data and you wanna make sure it's a high level of accuracy, what's coming from Airtable AI, then I really recommend that you take a look at JSON and use a little bit of scripting to be able to help get you there. If you have any questions about your own automation build, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.